Out to the team, out to the team. Our guy is going, guys. Our guy is going now. Take the pee behind, take the pee behind, guys. It's a mini knife, it's a mini knife. Don't flash it down, guys. Don't flash it down. Jingle down, Jin. I hit, I hit. Hit, 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 hit. For the all team, waiting for the perfect time. Flash in. Massive engage. Y'all just still standing. Knock back on 2-3. Does not have to throw them into the wall. Just hitting at the range. But Maple's there. And Maple has more than enough damage to do the work himself. Maple. Welcome back to Wolves 2024. Here in Berlin as PSG comes back against Spain Gaming here in Game 2 and a much more convincing game on the side of PSG here and I feel like I'm playing to the expectations that we had for the team here. Yeah, absolutely, but it's it's so weird to watch a game like game number one where you didn't like the draft, we didn't really like the play, and then they come out in game two and they just absolutely slam them, right? Yeah. Like, it, it wasn't even something where it took them a while to get going. It felt like they were destroying them right from the word go. Uh, I felt like Maple was really outplaying Jinkato in the 1v1 in mid. Even though Jinkato had, had push, he was falling so far behind in the trades. And then he's in this awkward situation where he's trying to hit only the minions, where Akali's hitting him and putting him further and further from behind. And that's why they call him Kim, Killian Mabel Mbappe as well, right? Oh, he's wow. He's playing the PSG community <laughs> with the talents. But I also think it was so much easier for them to play once they banned out this to Juani. I think Junji looked way more comfortable on this guy as well we saw it in the beginning for that 2v2 in the top side and i think it was just so much easier for them to work through junjia this time where in game one it was so impossible to do it draft i don't want to say draft diff but like uh, easier uh, easier situations to execute here maybe on the side of PSG, uh, PSG yeah. and PSG yeah it, it was interesting i mean I, I think psg you know they were able to come out with a draft that you know i think is more to like this kind of current meta you know it's a little bit different than what they were playing last time i would say though i still felt like they were pretty low on damage and so it did feel that there was some pressure to actually get ahead and create an advantage but this time i was just really impressed by their laning like they created advantages across the map all their lanes were winning um we saw junjia get so much more done in the last game he was able to get nothing yeah. done on the skarner whatsoever you know it was super late in the game he's still on zero kp i think he got one heart steel stack uh in the entire first game at least when i saw like 30 minutes in game two was he was lot. he was involved <laughs> in a lot he was finding good alties yeah um he even made a really good early gank towards top to put the rumble behind and keep Gnar in a really comfortable spot. So it just was more the PSG that we expected um, coming into the tournament, but not necessarily the PSG that we expected after we watched game number one. Completely agree. And uh, we're going to take a look at the HyperX Reflex replay here, GB, because that's exactly what Azel was saying just now in the sense that Skirmish is not going in PNG's favor, but also PSG executing perfectly here. And it came to really simple moment, a really precise mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's already been quite dicey for Wysa up in the top lane, and already in this position, it looks like it's lost, but it's really karaoke coming in here that makes it a very close effort. Yeah, exactly, and I have to credit Jinjia for how he's playing around Vision there. It was highlighted really well by the Observers. He had the pink down, he saw that uh, the Rumble was going to be walking in, so he walked back around the corner so he wasn't spotted on the ward, and that sets up for the E over the wall, you know, kind of catches him by surprise there. Um, and it was a very close fight, but the NAR is able to get Mega, obviously get some health back from that, and is able to survive as a result. So this was a really big play. When your lanes are already winning and then you win a skirmish like that on top side, then you have full control of the map, you have full prio everywhere, uh, and it kind of allowed PSG to really run away with this one. And yeah, and I mean, in general, that's been one of the ways that you beat Pain Gaming as well. If they don't have an avenue or some leads to play through from laning phase, they have a very difficult time of playing the mid to late game. Like, as we saw in game one, if they stack up the objectives, they find teamfight after teamfight, really easy for them to play the game. But when they get choked out like this slowly but surely from pretty much all the lanes, it becomes almost impossible for them to play the game. Yeah, and it was hard to maneuver and even contest objectives, I feel, even from the early stages of the game and thinking about... The dragons were a specific case, I feel, but when I look at the top side of the mic, specifically the grubs, contest it's really complicated for Bane to maneuver with the tools that they have. Yeah, like. I, absolutely. I mean, especially when you are pushed in, your resets are a lot harder. It's harder to get there at the right time. Uh, this oh. was a actually very close fight, though. You wouldn't think it was going to be with a three-man Skarner ult to actually be able to set this up. But uh, Payne was able to make something happen here. You know, they were able to actually finish off Woody. Yeah. And uh, Chitan on the side is able to find, you know, almost the kill here on Betty. But PSG do survive. The advantage that they had from their soul leaners from the 2v2 top early, as well as from Mabel creating that individual advantage in mid lane were really what shone through. And I was just so impressed by Maple in this game. I think he really made it work on the Akali. Uh, looked really strong start to finish. I mean, he forced Jinkato to build a Hex Drinker as, as his first completed item yeah. as a solo AP champion. And he really put him so far behind. He beat him down, even with him building that MR, and pretty much made the Yone useless. Yeah, I mean, he, he never really found a point in the game where he could come back. Even trying to stabilize, as you say, through that Hex Drinker, it just made it so that the bulk power spike was so much more slower. I think it was about yeah. 
the third dragon as well. They couldn't really contest it because he was still sitting on components. Like, it was very difficult for Pain Gaming in general to find themselves in a position where they wanted to fight. Even from Titan's side, he was mm -hmm. sitting on just Mora, uh, um, Mora Mana for so long, so mm -hmm. it wasn't completed as well. Like, it just felt like they never had the item spikes they needed to play the game that Pain Gaming usually wants, which is the team fighting. With this game looking way more like the expectations we had coming into today, what can we think about the third game ahead of us? Oh, it, it's, it's Was hard it just now. a dream for Fane or...? That's kind of what it feels like, right? Yeah. Like when you have a game one like that, it's easy after a game two to say, well, PSG just drafted wrong, right? You know, they just had the wrong read on the meta. Game two, they changed it up. They absolutely dominated them. So I do think you have to then go back to that expectation of PSG is the massive favorite. Unless Payne can really get something going, I think in the draft, try to throw some sort of a wrench in the gears. I think it's tough to predict. Yeah, but I mean, I want Pain Gaming to do it now after they took game one. You know, I kind of want to see them succeed, get rid of the rumble, have Titan again on something like the Lucian <laughs> Nami. I love the early aggression they played through. I really hope we see them try and contest the early game so they find themselves at a better position for fights in mid game. I mean, they have your passion. They have the fan support on mm -hmm. the other side of the arena. So let's send it over there, actually, and to our casters for game three. Thank you very much, Floor. Game three. Again, start of the day, not a position I expected that we would be in. Game mm -hmm. two looking much more convincing from the side of PSG. And I'm hoping that uh, Payne, you know, bring a couple adaptations in. Yeah. I don't think they need to blind pick Rumble. That's that's the I first mean, thing on my on my list. Oversimplification probably of what went wrong in that game, but it's it's a start, you know? We've just had so much whiplash this whole series because game one we expected PSG to completely dominate. Yep. Then they fall flat on their face. They pick five nerfs champions um, and they drop game one. But then in game two, it was probably in contention with game two of the Mad versus Vikings series to be the oh, most yeah. one-sided game of the day. I think it actually was the most one-sided game of the day with essentially a completely new draft. But now with losing game two, Payne picks blue, gives themselves the first blue side game of the entire series. And we already see different bands with Skarner being taken out. I wonder if any of the tanks will make it through or if PSG again want to ban away the Maokai. Ash was also on their list. Essentially not wanting to give over that playmaking and reliable kind of winning lane option. Mm -hmm. But clearly a lot of adaptation going to be available to both sides. Pain Gaming probably feeling under the gun a bit and they need to adjust there. But PSG, I would expect to still see them limit the Maokai. Instead, however, the Aurora perhaps mm. a staple of many red side bands uh, or red side drafts to come. It's going to be tricky because I think Payne is probably walking away from that game too and thinking, okay, even if we picked a good team fighting draft, we just can't have three losing lanes. Like yeah, that's yeah, always 100%. going to be a team's feedback uh, for the players whenever they have a game like that because it will feel so ridiculously hopeless with three losing lanes. So I'm just trying to figure out how they can actually do that because the Yone power pick, you would expect that to be decent. It got completely slammed by the Akali. They've played two sides of the Rumble matchup. They were getting pushed in on both of those. So neither of those were like safe blind pick lane winning champions. So if they're really looking to, to win lanes, they want to delay their lane picks as long as possible. And I don't really know what the real power picks of worlds are going to be so far, but that would almost mean like a jungler first pick so yeah. they can think about counter picking lanes. And interesting that both sides have really, it seems, decided to limit there the reliable is. proactive yeah. playmakers in the form of the, the kind of the tank here. Jungle options, excuse me, Jarvan, the Skarner, the Maokai, the Sejuani, but now Syndra mm -hmm. coming into I mean, the mix. Yeah. In theory, you can win. They think this is a blind pick winnable matchup, but curious to see what Maple matches it with. In theory, also, uh, I mean, uh, Champions Q is so hard to know what to take from it, right? But in theory, also a flex. Sure. I uh, feel like it's it's been a very heavily blinded pick in Champions Q so far. Historically, Cinder has been fairly blindable as long as you can build the right type of team comp around it. Yeah. I mean, you get to hold every single champion at arm's reach. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, abilities not forcing you to stop, not getting stuck in cast animations makes the champion feel so good in lane phase. And if they do pair it with a Lee Sin, you have really excellent CC setup, provide a bit more mid pressure. Band out most of the tank junglers, and the Akali Wukong is really threatening in team fights. It's not like a super strong 2v2 early, so I could definitely see Pain getting a little bit of push through the mid lane. Also, the Ash early pick 
going to be very vulnerable in team fights to the Akali Wukong, but I think for the most part, the priority for Pain was let's not lose lanes as bad as we did in game two. I mean, these are two champions who you would expect to have the push early yeah. on at the very least, and obviously the proactive playmaking you can get out of a Syndra and out of an Ash ultimate can't help to really set up this Lee Sin for success. Uh, that said, Wukong, a bit of a terror as you get later in the game, and as you highlighted against a mobile champion, it feels so good. A similar story for Jin, who can just, again, like in game two, operate at arm's length while you have a Wukong and an Akali diving into that back line. Yeah, Wukong also going to be a flex. You can play a top lane or jungle. They don't need to reveal that yet. They could actually hold it all the way to the fifth pick and really throw a curveball if Pain assumes that this is a jungler. So makes these second phase of bans a little bit more complex for Pain as well. Wu Kong top, of course, uh, got a little bit more popular after his buffs on 1416. I believe it was kind of the flavor of the month solo queue pick in Korean solo queue for a bit of time. See if that's something Aja wants to try. Yeah, if uh, Kasanta gets locked in, then you can put the Wukong against it. We saw the in the LCS playoffs to decent effect. Also just a champion against really any AD-based matchup with the passive buffs, who just get so much armor and extended trades, so... Any melee, melee champions can feel okay, at least for the lane phase. Now the Braum, though, taken away. Um, and when you already have an Ash and a Syndra, <laughs> and you're potentially relying on a Jin for follow-up, it makes a lot of sense. Braum, a champion who, in the right circumstances, can be one of the most powerful supports in the mm -hmm. game, just because of how good Concussive Blows is and how good Unbreakable is. The rest of his abilities, eh, they're all right. But those yeah. two abilities, hard to put a, a, a gold value on them. Absolutely. Another Poppy ban from Pain, even though I think it's pretty good against PSG's current champions. They just don't want to play against it in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They it would be really, it. really good for their team. Though. It I cannot, it's really hard to think of a champion that would be better for their team uh, in the support position right now, but I guess, you know, want to give Lee Sin the freedom to live his very best life. <laughs> yeah, just in case. <laughs> So Jack Jack taking away too, potentially heralding with oh. Wukong in the jungle. You have AP in the mid lane. You could also look to get AP in the top lane in the form of the Rumble. Uh, while you talked about like the obviously, or once Rumble has a few levels under his belt, Flame Spitter still gives him the push. But that mm. first few levels, um, Wiser was able to get a push out and a free base. So maybe just doesn't want to deal with that early game. Okay, they lock in the Leona, so they're holding the Wukong flex, which makes this pick a little bit more difficult. They could also just put Rumble in the top lane. It's going to be generally fine because they have enough AD from Jin Wukong. So I'm a big fan of PSG's draft so far. A lot of aggressive setup options. Every single champion has CC that can be used to start a fight on the side of pain. Taking their time. All right. Honestly, personally, personal preference, hate Alistair. Does a lot, but feels so useless in lane until level three. A little bit better against Leona than it is against Aurel, but still can be a little bit tricky. Worst to blind pick top now, what is the option? Nar, Cassante, Renekton would be the blind pick things you'd normally see. They have a lot of CC already, right, so they're Nar, going with a yeah. slightly stronger lane. Uh, more ranged lane. And Nar's excellent follow-up CC. Uh, you know, him, short of having a TP flank where you find that angle, it's often hard to get the immediate Nar setup. Rare that you get the mini double bounce into perfect ultimate in a game of competitive game of League of Legends. But both top laners taking turns, hovering things I don't think that they will pick. Yeah, I mean, I could see them moving Wukong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we are. We're all I, I mean, well, I asked, uh, coming into game two, hey, uh, is are they just playing old stuff? Do they not have anything new prepared for us? The answer is, um, no, they're playing new stuff. He played three games of it in the summer split. Yeah, but... Undefeated on Vayne. For me, it's new. And also, still crazy. Still zany. No matter how much it you is. play it in a region where you're, you know, the most domestically dominant team, I'm impressed if you pull it out on the world stage. Yes. I mean, let's, let's see if they can just dominate the lanes once again. So the biggest breaking point for me here is how Maple will do in that mid lane matchup against the Cinder because the Vayne should be able to get push. It's about avoiding the Lee Sin ganks as much as possible. And if they can somehow manufacture a lead in mid lane as well, then that's really where they can collapse the rest of the map. Definitely pressure on this early game. PSG, this competition gets ahead. It will feel so unplayable for Pain Game. But Pain Game, so many tools to start fights, so many pieces of CC to set up picks, much more than they had in the previous game. So as long as they don't fall too far behind, 
should be in a much better position than they were in game two. Can they make another upset happen? Not just a single game, but the entire series unprecedented for the CB Wall against an opponent of PSG's caliber. Can 19 on the global power rankings against 52nd. We'll still be a little bit different after today, mm. I can imagine, but it would be an incredible thing for Pain Gaming to make that upset happen. And it only takes one more game to take the series for either team. This is the deciding, the deciding game. I, after that game too, man, it's hard, it's hard to mentally recover from them just losing all three lanes because it did look so hopeless. But at the same time, it would just take one or two good things to happen early because of how fragile this PSG comp actually is. If they can get the vein behind early, if they can really shove in the Akali with the Cinder, that's when the upset becomes possible. It's very true. See what happens early on. Observers highlighting just mm -hmm. the vision of Dude, PSG yeah. because all of Vayne are waiting in that brush. This early ward secured just to make top lane a little bit better. Don't want to put Vayne in a position where she can walk in and out of the bush to drop minion aggro and harass that Gnar. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a swap. We had seen pretty active <laughs> level ones before. <laughs> all I'll say is like, Gnar is bad in a swap, but it is hard to imagine a champion worse than Vayne in a lane swap. <laughs> Although she could just go mid like it was at MSI and just be obnoxious. Mm. That one I do remember. True, the, the range top laner going mid. Just walking mid and laner. harassing, yeah. Kato, nice bit of early poke, bit of extra money too, courtesy of that first strike. I think Payne wasn't sure if PSG was going to swap, but let's see. They're just Ooh. looking for early intel on the Wukong, yeah. which makes me think that maybe Karaoke is looking for some shenanigans with counter jungling, like maybe he's thinking about going red to blue. Definitely could be an option. Top lane, though, is going to be a little bit miserable. Luckily, the double wards in the brush means that Vayne cannot just abuse being mm. able to walk in, tumble back, or tumble out, walk back in. And so we'll eat a bit more minion damage than you normally would if that ward was not present. Interesting. Yeah, that was the ward left by the early level one. I believe it was Alistair that went up there, then came back to base, bought a sweeper. Not helping that much. No, nah, this is pretty unplayable. Yeah, grasp vein. Oof. It's rare you're in a situation where it's not going to connect, but it's it's rare you're in a matchup where both sides of Nar feel bad. But both sides of Nar feel pretty bad <laughs> here. You're either melee range with like a desperate hope that Vayne forgets to put a point in condemn, or you're less range range where you are just getting smacked around. Yeah, just that grasp sound hurts. <laughs> okay, here we go. Set up on the boss side. Level three there. Nice Good knock start. up the cleanse isn't gonna help there. Lock up now coming in. The root not gonna do much of anything. Betty now in trouble. Minion wave doing a decent amount of damage, but she should just be able to grab that first kill. Nice use of the hawk shot to keep him standing. Carrio now gonna follow up on Woody. Jojo is here. He said needs to be careful. Jojo early burst isn't gonna be that crazy. Alistair already up. Curry hoping to mitigate this a little bit. Q in to try Ooh. to follow. Clone now coming out, but the lockup is there. Leona passive offering that bit of extra damage to make sure Jojo can secure and now. It's Curry who's forced to flash away, a bit over eager there on the re-engage. It really was. I loved the look already though. They had the early ward knowing where Wukong was starting. They didn't expect him to be anywhere near there because they thought uh, the ward would have given them the correct information. So he three camped into full gank bot lane, setting back his full clear quite a lot. But then giving that kill back at the very end of it nullifies the advantage he would have gained. Maple, not quite as favored early on here, but still threatening, still able to just stand in the wave. Betty now collapsing that wave in, and you can see the initial start here, very good. Cleanse on Jin feels great against a lot of things in this game, but Alistar knockup is not one of them. Yeah, being able to get into headbutt range before the Lee Sin showed was the crucial thing here. And then lo looking at this again, knowing that the blue buff was still up, Jinji was probably fairly close, but they really did think that they'd be able to bait outplay this one as that's a game. Kato in trouble. Flash forward. Maple finishes. Junja there to tank the tower shot to stop Maple from dropping down. Close exchange. Full confidence mm. there from PSG mid jungle. Mm. And that's what couldn't happen for Pain. They couldn't have the Syndra not only lose Flash, but also die early on. And the kill goal goes oh. over to Maple because now that means when Maple is level six, is going to have kill threat and be able to get Pryo in that lane. And losing Cannon. And Cheetan, the Ash obviously can win early on, but. Curry taking so much damage there for free. Pressure going in favor of PSG, and it's starting to feel like a bit of a run back. Similar to game two, different side for PSG, but the control of lanes is 
very heavily favoring them. Yeah, and something that was true in MSI and throughout the entire PCS split was when PSG got a lead, they pretty much never let it go. Yeah. So this early start is something they're very confident playing around, especially with Wukong outpacing the Lee Sin, going to be hitting level six first. Vayne, so difficult to deal with unless you're really going to devote a lot of resources to stopping him at this point, which they can't since both the Syndra and the Ash Alistair bot lane would be the ones in need of more assistance. So PSG is very happy with the start of this game. You can see the pings out. They know Lee Sin's in one of two spots, neither of which are near mid, which allows Mabel to just play so incredibly aggressive. Jinkato's like, okay, surely this guy won't continue to walk at me. He tries to predict with mm. the Dark Sphere behind him. Nope, he's continuing to step into you. He will just keep walking forward as long as he knows he has the safety to do so. But Curry, Hoping that he makes the same decision twice. Oh, nice sidestep by Maple. He is level six as well, so pretty easy to just crash this wave. If Alistair goes in, I, I think Wukong Leon is going to turn it. And pull. A lot here. Just having fun. Yeah, I mean, I think Seattle League's still on cooldown, right? So there's not really immediate follow up. You don't have ulti yet. PSG taking control of the top side. Payne giving a ton of resources here just to yeah. try to contest this area of the map. They, I mean, they do have the numbers advantage here. Aja doesn't look like he's interested in teleporting down. So yeah, I think PSG is totally fine giving away these three grubs just for more gold and XP onto the vein. Good roam up there by Payne, though, getting the grubs relatively uncontested, especially since they can teleport bot to match that vein. And while it's frustrating because you will lose some plates on the bottom side, uh, you know, the vein with a bigger advantage with Grubs, the ability to shred through those plates even faster in the future would only feel worse. So, Pain, choosing a little bit worse up front and then a little bit worse later. But Jinja here, Wajar well, has to be so careful. If he gets knocked into a wall, more than enough damage to finish the job before he can turn into Mega. He doesn't even have the Ninja Tab he completed yet. But luckily, Curry again in the area. And credit to him, he's been consistently in the right place across these games. Good knock up, level five there, marked before the clone can come out. Now trying to get away, but Karyoka just following up instantly. Wiser on the way in, level seven, gonna pick up the kill. A little stop juke comes out from Junja, but nobody's falling for it. Quick kill back, and Pang giving credit to them, finding yeah. the angle. No, that's huge. I'm also I'm a little surprised that Wukong was there, to be honest. A lot of times you'd want to just continue to farm your camps, keep your lead, and since you have such winning lanes, just kind of be there to match when the other team comes down. But credit to Payne for finding that kill. I think it keeps them alive in this game. You now having an additional kill, being able to go back when he does go back, get those tabbies, maybe get a little bit extra, makes the lane phase so much easier. And Vayne is very much so often in pro play, just that feast or famine champion, right? She's either single-handedly winning her lane in isolation in a way that makes it miserable to play against her or, or doing very, very little. There's really no in-between. Jinkato, though, continues to struggle here in a lot of these trades. Does have the lost chapter now, so can spam out a bit more in lane, but maybe forced into some early MR here shortly. Uh, in general, Mark Treads, very high value against any Leona and the Jin, so wouldn't be a bad purchase. Yeah, really, really interested to see how Jinkato can perform the rest of this game since there's so many champions that want to flank and kill him. In theory, he's good against the Vayne, but yeah. just really struggles against the Akali and the Wukong in teamfights, which I think could nullify a lot of his in, like potential advantage in being able to just outrange and win front to back. Yeah, and you can see also why it was important for PSG to, buy, uh, to ban the Braum, right? So much of their team mm. comp is so vulnerable to those single pieces of CC. And now they don't really have that immediate reliable disengage option on the side of pain gaming. Circumstantially, yeah. you can, yeah, you can Elisir head put somebody out. Maybe Gnar can push people back, but it's just not the same reliability that Braum brings to the table. Now, Wiser starting to push top lane. A little bit more confidence. Pain again, looking to take another objective. This time around, though, it won't cost them nearly as much. Their waves are in a pretty good state. We'll see if PSG feel like they can contest this, but they're certainly on the back foot in terms of overall map pressure. I think they just get this, which is... I'm a little bit surprised. It, it felt like PSG had control of this game, but now they've lost three grubs. They've lost first Drake, and they haven't extended their gold lead. So quietly, Payne has really jumped back into this game. Yeah, very close. Berlin Studio. A lot of love this Payne gaming lineup. PSG. Again, not much to play for on the bottom side, but as we start to split out into side lanes and 80 carries are assigned mid, there is a lot of potential for picks between the Jin and the Ash. More than enough setup on either side if anyone does overstep here. 
Isolated 1v1 still very hard for the Gnar, but is much easier now that the Ninja Tabbies have come through. Is the arrow gonna land? Quick cleanse out. Well played. Gotta live here. Yeah, pretty simple, actually. Uh, so that's a couple of moves there by PSG trying to... I mean, they're really extending into the territory of Pain and getting nothing for it. I think one of the big differences here, yes, Jin Kato is still losing out a little bit in the laning phase, but Syndra's wave clear is so much safer than the Yone. So mm. he doesn't have to just eat half of his health bar to delete a wave to try to avoid a dive, which just puts him in a much more comfortable position. Is now Aja going to get kicked backwards. Q does it. manage to connect anyway. Aja spotted out there. That invisibility not doing anything against the Lee Sin. Good pick from Pain Gaming. Here we go, the Syndra pops in for a little bit of credit towards the end, but that's gonna mean it's time for the Nar to reset. Syndra can get the extra plate, continue to extend the pressure, and that's that's just exactly what PSG was hoping would happen in the bot lane, but the play was nowhere to be found because the Syndra could easily clear the wave. Vayne could not easily clear the wave on the sideline like that, so the play has a much higher success rate. Well done there by Payne. Aja wasn't allowed to be there. Certainly wasn't. Downside is it's probably going to cost them the respawn of the Scrubs, but they already picked up three earlier on. Trading three for three, not going to feel too bad for them. Will concede a plate as uh, Curry, maybe not the ideal person to hold a lane. Will cost them about half wave there as Wydrup does finally show up. Titan, Titan, excuse me, has to be careful about not stepping too far forward here, but Clint's so high value against this bot lane duo means he's still relatively safe. Yeah, Wukong finishing up the Grubs. Maple trying to get as much gold as possible in the side lane. Not as accelerated as he was in the last game. Once he gets his Storm Surge, though, he's still going to be a huge threat to both the Ash and the Syndra. Jinkato smartly backs away. In the yeah. previous dive, he cleared the wave fast enough that he would have been okay. But when both Wukong and Leona are in the picture, it's more than enough uh, raw HP to just survive any kind of dive. I mean, it's really interesting. He. he did this exactly right. He waited for his Lee Sin to shadow him, and then he moves up on the cannon wave, doesn't really lose anything, and the rest of his team can then go clear vision from his own jungle. This is starting to look similar to game one, where Payne is just playing with a lot of discipline and patience, not falling too far behind, so PSG can't pull off kind of their comfort zone plays where they're 5,000 gold ahead and just really hard bullying everywhere they go. And again, this, this Vayne pick, doesn't have a good way to wave clear under the turret, means the Wukong has to come up and help Shadow to prevent the dive. Oh, excellent position for Pain. And I think this is a game where you can see that, you know, you don't have those true crazy hyperscalers. There's no Jinx, there's no Aphelios, right? Those, those traditional late game carries, no Zeri. But the Ash is gonna do a lot of work. The setup, the ease of execution for the size of mm. Pain in most plays is very heavily, 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 excuse me, wow, words are hard, favored towards them. While in 3v3s, you can argue that the Wukong, Leona together are gonna do a decent amount of work. There's the sheer quantity of CC on this Pain gaming lineup. It's gonna yeah. make it pretty tough for any of the squishier members of PSG to play at all. Asha is gonna have a hell of a time in these fights. And as of now, they have no Merc Treads either. I would expect Wukong to buy Merc Treads as well as Leona, but if they get CC or an Ash Arrow on any of these carries, they can probably just pull off the one shot. Good spot to be. I mean, we saw in game two, right? It was just difficult because even if they found the angle, they were far behind enough that they couldn't finish the kills. And while Wukong is, uh, you know, tanky-ish jungler, Bruisery does get a lot of armor for free if he stays in combat. It's not a Skarner. You can't just eat an entire rotation of cooldowns and walk away. I think we're gonna have a good game. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was really doubtful after game two. Yeah, it was just I, it's the be. worst feeling in the world when you see an upset in game one and the next two games are like, uh-oh, it was a dream, we're all waking up now. You know what yeah. I mean? No, I'm, I'm feeling this game. I think it's gonna be a, a close one. With that being said, this next Drake fight, very important. <laughs> so, Certainly is. Uh, if Wukong gets the right type of flank onto Ash Syndra, it's a little bit similar to the Jarvan comps we were talking about earlier, where you can just really punish the mobile carries. But if they can if they can mark him well, they can be the ones to burst the Wukong. The Syndra damage right now with Ludens being completed is enough to shut down Wukong and be the first ones to engage. Initial lockup decent, but level six is there trying to find the kickback. Karaoke just gonna walk away. Second, you see ulti there. Pretty good. From Junja. Decent control, but a lot of their pick tools used in that exchange. Leona ult is still there. PNG don't really trade much. Alistair ult is the big cooldown, really, yeah. in that context. If you're pain, you're absolutely taking that. Wukong is the biggest thing that you're afraid of. Betty. Go for Betty. Four shot. Now trying to follow up. Leona doing what she can. Woody trying to disengage. Jinkato tries to hit the scatter leak, but it does not connect. Body blocks are there. Level 10 for Betty. 
And now a TP down to the bottom lane. Take a look at the Master Card, the lane economy snapshot. Or we won't. Because it's very close, is what it's going to tell us. It's going to tell us that, except for top. Where Gnar yeah. is a thousand gold yes, ahead, sir, as you expect in the Gnar versus Vayne. Actually, it's a winning matchup. We were Vayne wrong. He has to scale, apparently. <laughs> Needs a bit more time as PSG had decent vision control, but with Gnar able to get first move and having Mega, yeah. this is a really tough fight to navigate. I just here. Betty and Woody are so low, and Betty doesn't have ulti. So a bit of a spectator objective there, window shopping for that particular Drake, but Pain Gaming had more money, had more resources, so they're actually going to be the ones to walk into the store and buy it. Well played, and they also have Tempo on the map currently with the ability to get first on mid wave, first on bot wave. PSD running out at the moment. On the next reset, PSD is going to be able to get some Tempo of their own, but just you're going to trade that every time for the second Drake, and still a slight goal lead. Yeah. Maple, I think TPing top to try to get this wave in to make sure that they do have a pressure point where they can get a bit of vision control around this objective. Harold, of course, important for both of these lineups to maybe break us out of this laning cycle. But short-lived. Does let his team get in a little bit, but no one is there with wards to lay down the vision. Woody has to go mid to make sure that Betty is safe. So they'll get first initial setup, but PNG likely to just take it back. Man. Okay, so Rift Herald available right now. And Payne is playing as patient as they did in game one, which is extremely good for them because they're almost waiting for PSG to commit to objectives. And that's where they're finding the fights because right now, PSG actually has very poor objective approach because they have really low range. So unless PSG can actually win side lanes and get flank set up, they can't approach objectives very well. So this whole time in between objectives, Pain kind of just has to avoid getting picked. And then if they have push as they move towards objectives, they'd be fairly confident actually taking these fights from range. And you can see they're immediately backing away as they realize they're pretty split, regrouping as four, re-approaching the objective. And it's not just the short range, it's also the general lack of wave clear. Yeah. Right? Like, Vayne is terrible at clearing waves. One of the big reasons the champion isn't more popular in pro, right, is as much of a bully as she is in lane. She's so slow to push this out. And while Maple's decent now that he has enough points in Q, uh, even Jin has to pick I build items to supplement that wave clear. That's it. PG, only three people in the area. You've got Gnar yeah. waiting off the side. Look at Wiser's rage management. Perfectly ready to go. If a fight does break out, we'll start to tick away, but not too far off Mega. They go first. Taking their time on Woody. They don't need to overcommit resources. Wiser now charging up the Mega. Ooh. Good initial pick. Junja trying to buy a bit more space, buy a bit more time. Jungler already taken off the board. Junja still running, still living for an extra moment. But the knockback is there. Wiser just completely whiffing. Knockback wish again, Nor! Missing everything. PSG outplaying it. Now Audra, this is the perfect circumstance. He just wants to chase these kills out. Maple is there as well. The dynamic duel, the solo lanes. But PSG trying to play clean up as Betty returns to the mid lane. Payne had so much confidence going into that fight, but PSG are the ones that just execute straight up better. Vayne actually just knocking the Gnar around, discombobulating Wiser as he misses all of his important skill shots in this one. No Herald goes over though, so it's purely a gold advantage currently gained from that fight for PSG. Audra at least able to return to the top lane. Not even gonna stick around and try to take the tower. Knows that the lead that they built for themselves in terms of overall map presence isn't that big. Guys are frustrating play. Yeah. Wallop, I imagine what ends up happening there is you're buffering the wallop or you're pushing it as you lock your camera so it ends up going the wrong way and then the ulti just completely whiffing here. Yeah, Payne tried to hard engage onto the Leona and do not get the burst down early, which immediately puts them at a bit of a disadvantage. And they really extra chase to finish off this Wukong. And I I think that's got to be what happened, but absolutely wrong I mean, some, side on his W. Yeah, some kind of misinput, most certainly. And this is a circumstance where if you burned all your cooldowns, Vayne is going to have a hell of a time yeah. running you down. Thinking about a dive bot, that's a Meganar though. Wiser. They're going to kill the chart first. Ulti back up. Going to go in, go for the pushback into the wall, get a little bit of damage down, but no one is in the area. Meanwhile, his team already trying to take down other objectives. Wiser taking out the equation, but it's tier one top, traded in return. Mid lane, I believe, under pressure as well. So two towers taken down for one. Pain Gaming in a decent spot. They want to continue to trade up. No one has taken yeah. the Herald. It's not the center of attention. Instead, so much more about pressure on these side lane objectives. And we're just getting a bit of a, a, bit of a side lane race. We're going to take two as well. I think they're just agreeing to give each other money. Which, if you could do this in real life, I think a lot of people would. <laughs> Guys, I've, so, figured, I've figured out economics. I've never yeah. read anything about it. I don't know anything about it. But what if we both 
get money. We're just both gonna accelerate the game. That's what we want. I think it will probably actually end up favoring. Wait, isn't this how inflation happens? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Someone, someone <laughs> in the math in this before. I, I think it favors PSG though. Is what is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, because more more so because of the space created on the map. That gives a really really deep angle if they can ever get really deep push in that bottom lane for Maple uh, or Wukong to come up for a big flank. Yeah, and it can be really tricky for Jinkato on these side lanes against champions like the Akali, like the Vayne. Very reliant on getting a lot of damage up front and an extended trade. He's just never going to be favored. But Pain Gaming forced to catch that bot wave pretty far back. There's a decent TP flank ward if they choose to use it. They have to be careful here. Jojo ready mm. to start a fight. Yeah, and looking at the items, Pain is, or PSG is way stronger. They have two, com two complete items on Akali and on Jin. It's going to be important. Betty doing what he can to clear the wave. Shitan just continues to bully though, knowing the rest of the team is elsewhere. So Pryon mid. Oof, this is dangerous because they do not have two core items on Syndra and Ash against two carries of PSG that do have two core items. They see Maple Top. They know he has to TP in. They're hoping that they can just burn this down, that they can just get themselves into soul point. Wiser with the ultimate, he has to be better in this fight. Maple's already on the flight, Chito now gonna be in trouble. Then Ariel completely whips in terms of overall timing out. Chito is gonna be in trouble. E1 connecting, E2 ready to go forward. Karyuk can't kick him back in time. The execution once again from PSG is just better. Wow, that was so close. They almost missed the smite on the Drake. It went down to 13, but then they were still able to secure it. I think they're gonna ultimately think that's worth as long as they can stop this Baron. But unlike last game, this can be a fast Baron because that's a Kraken Slayer Bane. <laughs> much, much faster this time around. Aja there, Junja there as well. Good damage. We're still early enough in the game and the gold lead not big enough that it'll take a little bit of time. But Karioka, can he get into the pit? Stop it. Doesn't have ulti. 5k getting lower, Jinkato. Closer, closer, 3k, they're gonna try and burst it. The objective should just fall here. They're gonna try to pick up the pick in the meantime, but I don't know if this fight favors them. PSG still ready to go. Round two, not quite going to happen. Pain Gaming caught reeling. TP down to the bottom side. They're just trying to delay some of these recalls, maybe get a bit more goals in their back pocket. Confident play from PSG. Yes, they lose out on the smite fight, but they do manage to grab the Baron. And that, I think, is why that was such a risk by Pain because they were always going to lose this fight. They just were so far down in items and they commit a lot of cooldowns just to secure that Drake. I'd say PSG did go too late though. Maple, if he's in there 10 seconds earlier, they can get this fight before the Drake goes down. They still clean up, they still get the Baron. If they can make something happen with this Baron, they can make it almost impossible for Pain to get that soul. But being on soul point is probably something that Pain is pretty happy about. Especially Hextech, right? Yeah. Arguably the strongest soul in the game in terms of uh, efficient combat output. But PSG, Ash out. not gonna hit. I mean, that's still just a vein. That's still just a vein. Lisa can see her. But now the rest of PSG is collapsing and things are looking a little bit difficult. Excellent scatter leak with Ginger ready to go over the wall and already the Jin is in range. Nice knockback, stopping the first ulti. Additional headbutt to make sure that they can escape safely. But PSG are hungry for blood. Normally a much more map-focused team saw their angle to try and force the fight and get a bigger advantage. Yeah, I mean, if they win a big fight here, <clears throat> they can secure the series because with the Baron buff, uh, nothing's going to stop their push on the, side of, uh, on the side of PSG. So just trying to get as many objectives as possible because they really, really need to extend their lead to make that soul uh, impossible to complete. Definitely do. One of the few ways Pain Gaming have left in this. The gold doesn't look massive, but the, the map position has been so good for PSG. Yeah. The itemization, you talked about it before. Finally, we're starting to take over to two items on most of the Ooh. members of Pain Gaming what? as the fight's now going to start to break out. Junja in trouble. Karyo trying to backstep Jinkato, ready to go. Has the Q. <laughs> Mine's telling him no, but his body also telling him no. Will not go in. It's a good thing. He would have died. Yeah. But I. Ah. Would have been hard to not take with how low the Wukong was. And the side lanes are not actually in that bad of a spot. Um, Weiser's Nar getting decent push. They're still able to secure their own jungle. It's not as dire as it was in some of the previous games. I still think we're headed to a pretty interesting end to this game. I would slightly favor PSG from this point, but it's like they're out of mistakes. Yeah. Titan has to watch that tower get taken down, but luckily has enough movement speed to get away from that Wukong. Betty continues to push in mid lane. Baron buff still there for 20 seconds. This is the last wave the PSG will have to play with this particular buff. But Aja can't really walk up alone. This is mm. the difficult portion. So no. powerful in the isolated 1v1, but still not the longest range, not the most threat onto a tower. And Maple having a second straight strong Akali game, hitting level 15 now. 
two completed items and didn't see a large wrong. But what I mean by them just being out of mistakes is they are they're clearly the stronger team right now. Sure. And yeah. if they execute, you know, exactly right, then Payne won't win another fight, Payne won't get another objective. But one mistake in this next minute. Let's say Maple gets picked, misses ultimate, or maybe Wukong dies before fight. That could be Soul, and then I'd immediately favor Pain in the game. So yeah. while PSG is favored, is ahead, they're right on the tipping point if they give up this Soul accidentally. Very close. Tenuous advantage. They have the tools to deny the Soul from the side of Pain Gaming, but can't afford to get caught out on side lane. You can see Maple. Immediately backing off, doesn't have the vision to step any further forward, even though he does see a little bit, at least on the other side of the pit. I believe Payne saw that ward get placed. Curry was there, so not sure if they're just not worried about it. Ryoka has to be careful, though. Condemn alone, not too scary, but when you've got two other members to back you up, it can be a bit difficult. Ulti immediately okay. to kick things off. Junji getting a lot of cooldowns in exchange for his ultimate. Still feels like a trade that overall favors PSG given that they already have a dominant position around this objective. Still engage with Leona, but they have no deep push here, so Maple doesn't actually have a strong flank that he can go through. And if you're PSG, you do not want this Drake taking damage. The closer it gets to a flip, the closer you get to losing the game. Aja on the flank. If he goes in first, it'll be difficult. Now the ulti getting brought out. Junji getting lower and lower. Aja waiting off to the side visor, hoping to find that good ulti angle. Oh. Curry now taken down. Karyoka going back in. Woody lower and Drake lower. 2K on the objective. Can they find a way to finish this one off? Karyoka knocked out of the fight. Betty stepping up. One, two shots, trying to find the job. The Hextech Drake taken out and taken oh. down by PSG. Wiser and Karyoka oh. trying to make it happen. Maple in Maple. the clutch. One oh. kill, two makes it look easy. Three overall, the triple for that man in the mid lane. Oh, it's a banger, Dracos. Nine champions die in that fight, and Maple's the one who walks away. But this is extremely close as that Drake gets lower and lower. Woody flies in. The focus to me is all on the Drake, and that's what PSG takes advantage of because Payne really want to steal this Drake. Wukong is able to secure it, and then the end of this fight is just pure chaos. Maple jukes around the outside. Once he lands that E, it's over. And again, we talk about Maple so much when we talk about this team because he's that historic figure, right? He's the guy with the pedigree, but when he's the guy with the hands and the mechanics and the massive 7 0 1 scoreline, too, you know, PSG are set up for success. Game one was rough. Game two, incredibly dominant. Game three's been a bit more tenuous for them, certainly. But Maple is in such a strong position to bring this one home. Yeah, I think that was a shot we had of Jin Kato just kind of scratching his head after that one. Wasn't able to have a good position on Cinder. Just they, once they move into the pit, their backside gets so exposed for the flank of the Akali or even the Wukong that it gets really dangerous. And that, that was a fight where Wukong didn't even get the flank off. Yeah. I think that's one of the important things that Payne's been able to do is they've been able to get that Wukong out, alt out early. Because if there's a fight where Wukong is able to actually truly engage on a squishy, I think the series would be over. We oh, find the angle. Leona. A lot of damage on the clone there, but it cost them getting in position for the solar flare. They try to force the play on the side of Pain Gaming, but PSG punished that single moment, that mm. little bit of inaccuracy. Quick reaction comes in from Junja, stops any of that initial poke, any of that initial CC from landing on him. Yeah, flashless Syndra is such a hard game to play against what PSG has, especially when you're lacking vision or gold lead. So that's likely going to be another Baron here for PSG. And now it starts to feel a little bit easier for PSG, I think it's safe to say. Three and a half items getting closer and closer to four. Their gold lead, not insurmountable, but feeling pretty damn close. Still have to respect the potential of Soul, but otherwise, they're in a perfect setup to close this one out. They absolutely are. They haven't made that mistake yet. They had that one mistake still to spin. Yeah. Uh, could happen any moment, though. If Maple <laughs> does die, then that's a huge bounty going over. Yes. Maybe changes the tide of this game, but completely agree with you, PSG. It's, look to be in position it's to really win. hard for Maple to die. He's two levels up over Jin Kato. Uh -huh. He has Zanyas. He's he's and Trap. He's very hard to kill, but it's, it is possible. Karyoka again, managing to land these Qs. Spotting out Junja. We'll clear the wave. 
Team Kato having that range does still make it pretty easy to defend these towers, especially even through the Baron buff when they bring enough members to the fore. And Maple finally moving to bot wave to try to get that mm. going so that they have more pressure points to play around. But not the most effective Baron thus far from PSG. No, definitely not. Only 1,800 gold on that Baron power play. Two minutes left. Going to reset, maybe try a little bit more. But that's because they've gotten rid of the majority of the easy standing gold, aside from this one turret where Pain was all five grouped up since PSG didn't have any good side lanes to push. Looks like, for the most part, this is just going to, you know, line their pocketbooks a little bit before this next soul fight. Yeah. And should have the better vision control and better position around that Drake, which again is one of the, old, probably the only out the Pain Gaming have left, short of a massive misstep. Mm, Betty also, fourth item. Yeah, Jin is scary. Yeah, Jin actually really starts to do damage at four items. Jin is, Jin is one of those champions who goes from, haha, I'm an alt and a snare and nothing else, yeah. to like, oh, I'm, I'm two tapping you. Yeah. And there's no tank. Right, like, Alistair, yeah, I guess, with all, but, like, everyone else very vulnerable to the Jin. The historic weakness of Jin not being able to shred through a tank is, is not an issue here, also because he has a Vayne on his team. Yeah, I feel like if Ash gets to half health, like, one Jin bullet kills him. Yeah, yeah, it's a really scary prospect on an on a immobile champion like Ash. And Syndra still doesn't have death cap. Is there a chance he can get it before? He's only on 700 gold at the moment. 400 more, if I remember correctly? Yeah. Oh, maybe they can get Maple, though. Maple eating the wrong way. That's not what you want to do. Draco, there goes the Zanyas. I cursed him. I said I got cursed him. I'm sorry, PSG. How fans. could he die, he says. How could he die? The, the answer is, yeah, that's how. He could E the wrong way. But OK, now, so Aja's Vayne is taking this Drake. Do they try and defend this 4v5 because of the gold lead, or just delay long enough 40 seconds for Maple to come back alive and teleport in? Because this, no. this soul is up. Pain have to take this. PSG have to be willing to concede this, and they have to try to fight through a team with Hextech Soul. Go for the 50-50 here. Do they win the flit? Lee off on the side. Junja in the midst of the pit. Aja just coming straight over the wall, knocking. Curry's gonna knock him out of the pit, but it's just about who can get the smite in the end. 4K getting lower. It's not low enough yet. Junja trying to focus on the kill. They want to kill the Wukong. They absolutely don't want to have to flip it. They know you. Junja's still alive, though, and that's gonna be crucial. She's not getting in the midst of the pit. Junja about to die. on the Drake allows Aja's Vayne to just free hit throughout. And just like that, Drake goes, I think the series is over. They're going to teleport in <laughs> and kill the Nexus. Maple. Oh, Wukong just died to a turret. Five head, Wukong just died to a tower. They're, they're still going to end the game. Death timer has been too long. Curry, there's got to be no way he can hold this one. PSG, it starts with okay. Maple getting picked, but they outplay. Tunnel vision from Pain. Focus too much on the objective means that PSG will come out on top. Maybe not the cleanest game they were looking for, but still quite dominant for most of it. And no matter what happens in these best of threes, you can lose the game one, 18 kills to two. You can just flip it with your 7-0 Akali dead at the soul fight. But as long as you win two of the three games, it counts exactly the same as if they were both perfect. They move up <laughs> to the winner's bracket, and Payne moves down. Credit to PSG, weathering the storm, adapting after a very rough game one. Credit, I mean, credit, credit to Payne as well for putting up such a good fight against yeah. a team that was so heavily favored uh, in so many different metrics. But it's it's going to be really interesting. I mean, for Payne, I think their expectations coming to this World Championship is they want to put up a good showing. They want to fight and show themselves against these other top teams. And if before the series, you had this option before you that they're going to have this soul fight that maybe decides the series, you're going to take that 10 times out of 10. Oh, sure. But I feel like in the moment right now, they're going to be crushed because oh, they were so close to taking down this PSG team who just by the skin of their teeth escape and take out take home the win. Yeah, and it's rough because in, by the, the same logic that you use to celebrate PSG, right, also counts against pain because a lot of people will see the loss and not see the heartfelt effort mm -hmm. and the incredible moments across these three games where they were able to fight back, that first game where they were able to take down PSG. So much of that context gets erased when we look back at history, right? And I think that for them, they have to hope that this is just the beginning of what could be a very promising showing at Worlds. Mm -hmm. And I think for PSG, 
this is a valuable series for them to have played. It's actually more valuable for this to happen than for their very old team comp in game one to win and then just rolling yeah, with that, that for the rest of Worlds. I don't think that would have been helpful for their read on the meta. So absolutely, I, I think their read on the meta was was off with their game one draft. It was just Rumble Tristana. Maybe they knew it was bad and thought they'd be able to win anyway. We'll never know for sure. But because they're moving up in the bracket anyways, it's completely fine. And I think very important that they got that read tested, yeah. proven wrong, and they could adapt and not get punished for it. Certainly. And I am impressed that they got away with that vein. That was, I mean, credit to Aja. That man, it was like, Full confidence there. I mean, he got the triple kill in the last fight, Draco. He, he played cleanup. He did. He played cleanup. Oh, if enough people are flanking from different angles, how do you defend yourself? It's difficult. It's tricky. But overall, yeah. I think a series that was on paper supposed to be so one-sided ended up being so back and forth and so compelling. And yeah. I, I, that's one thing that I love about when you talk about plans is it's like so much, because we get to see so much tape from like the top four mm -hmm. regions playing as we go later and later in the tournament, it's so much easier to have like a solid prediction on where people are gonna stack up. But plans always manages to shake things up. One man who's gonna be happy about that series, however, is Maple and he's standing by for our post game interview. Hello and welcome everybody to the post-match interview. With me is Maple after his victory up against Pain Gaming and also reason to help us out with the translation. First off, congratulations on the win, Gongxi. I want to know how he feels after finishing his first match of World Worlds 2024. Uh, first, thank you 嗯,就其實今天是我們的第一場比賽嘛,然後我覺得第一場我們打的感覺有點緊張吧,所以其實在進攻的時候就是感覺都在跟對面法語,所以二三把就是我們選比較打架的陣容這樣子。so after first game, um, they got a little bit nervous, but then um, at first they are um, doing a lot of laning, but then after the first game, they decided to do more fight uh, surrounding about that. I think the change in the strategy worked really well. And also I think his Akali pick was the main kind of key point bringing your team to the victory. So I want to know your thought process be behind locking in that Akali for two games in a row. And how does he rate Akali right now? Akali? 就阿卡莉的話,其實是我比較擅長的英雄,然後這版本因為法師裝備都會改強了嘛,所以其實這個版本的話我覺得阿卡莉還是挺不錯的。So in this patch, uh, most of the mages are buff a lot, so he, um, at first he, also Akali is his, um, um, uh, personal favorite uh, champion, and also it's good for counter picks as, um, if there's mage champion. And that is exactly how it worked in the series. And I want to ask about his kind of mental fortitude as well, because even last year he mentioned about he might even consider, you know, returning, uh, having some break after the Worlds run, but he made it back to Worlds one more time. And this time also he has Betty on the lineup who made it to back to Worlds after 2018. So I want to know what kind of drives them to keep competing on the world-class stage for such a long time. 就是有關你的一些個人的想法,就是你有提到說你可能會需要一段時間的休息,那在這次世界賽的話,關於Betty一起歸隊的話,你有什麼樣的想法或是是什麼促使你一直這麼有動力的呢? So basically, he thinks that the team has better performance this year, and he wishes to do better than ever, and has a higher um, goal that in this year's world. Amazing. Thank you so much for the interview, and thank you, Reason, for the translation. One more time, this was Maple from PSG. Please give it up for Maple one more time, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.
Yay, thank you so much. It's an amazing to hear from Maple and PSG takes the series here to N1 and they will advance to the next round. Welcome to Cooldown, everyone. The last portion of the day here. We're going to review what happened today, actually, because I don't feel like this is the way we expected this series to go, even if the result is more so. Yeah, I mean, we expect, we expected PSG to win, but like everything else uh, was, was not like this at all. And I mean, I, I just have to say, uh, Maple, it's so impressive how well he is playing, you know, this far into his career. You know, Laura, you were saying this is the... 11th anniversary of his international debut. Yeah, like that, that is crazy. And he wins player of the series, you know, <laughs> like being able to actually do that 11 years into your pro career. The players that can do that and perform at that high level, this consistency for so many years, mm -hmm. are the most impressive pro gamers to me, you know, it's more so than people who peak a little bit higher. People like Impact, people like him, people like Faker, people like Deft, you know, guys who have been playing forever through all these different metas, through all these different teams, teammates, yeah. situations, and still performing. Like, it takes such dedication and so much, uh, you know, skill and perseverance to be able to do that for so many years. Yeah, absolutely. And it's you're not only competing against others, you're competing against yourself, against mm -hmm. your vision of the game, because you have to constantly update and adapt. And I feel like, GB, this was a story of adaptation, maybe on the side of PSG, from game one to game two, taking game three in the end, but I have the feeling that Game 3 could have gone either way. I mean, that, that last fight has to be heartbreaking so for Kane. I mean, no. you finally catch Mabel, the guy who's been giving you issues the entire game, not just Game 3, but Game 2 as well on the Akali. He's been a nuisance. You're on Soul Point. You finally kill him. You gather around the Drake. And what happens? You get cleaned up afterwards and our team fought. And it's just so close for Brazil. That could have been the first best of three that they would have won against the PCS. Brazil in general don't get many mm -hmm. wins on the international stage, at least not since we had the in, um, international wildcard qualifications. Yeah. So this could have been so huge. But I mean, in the end, PSG, they managed to bring it back. I mean, especially against a team of this caliber, right? Yeah, the people yeah. are actually ranking as, as the best team coming in to play-ins. For them to be that close, one fight away. And let's be honest, it's a fight that most of the time they should win, that they would win. They had a straight up 5v4 at Dragon for Hextech Soul yeah. in the game deciding <laughs> game here. Like that is a situation where you would be confident 90% of the time you would actually win. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. actually on this on this weird angle coming in on the vein. TP's over the wall, immediately enters the fight by flashing into the pit. Uh -huh. And it's like, I just think that in that situation, they probably got a little bit too excited, a little bit too nervous. They're so focused on trying to burn down the dragon yeah. that it's like, because hitting hitting the dragon while they're hitting him and he's you're kind of you know, just in this weird spot where I think maybe they just got a little bit panicked. Yeah, the, the fights were just so long. They managed to get the Sundered Sky up multiple times mm -hmm. and that just made sure that Junjia never really died. They thought they were going to kill him. They thought they were going to get the Drake, but he just kept uh, life stealing up and that really was a big problem for them. Quick mention of the Vayne because you know that in Europe we love to go Vayne. We love to go Vayne, especially Dylan, when Vayne is we not have to go Vayne. To go. <laughs> yeah, but I don't feel like it was the best angle here. Yeah, I mean, it, it was <laughs> interesting. I think it worked well in the matchup in the isolated 1v1, but some things kind of went bad. Um, obviously, they, they had Jinjia coming down to look for a potential dive, um, but Curry on the other side, I think, was already waiting there. They were able to get a kill for the Nar, and then from that spot, he was totally fine in the isolated 1v1. And I just thought it was such a hard Vayne game to play out because it's not like he can take cleanse. He's playing with the TP. Yeah. There's so much CC on the pain gaming side that I really favored their comp. I mean, you have Ash, you have Syndra, you have all these ways to actually start out a fight. You could cop at the Lee Sin, you could cop at the Alistar, you know, and if you do get caught whatsoever, you're going to die 100 to 0 in most of those situations. And that was true for most of the champs on um, on PSG's side, but they were able to actually just mechanically outplay. I really liked how they were able to split up some of these fights and, and turn them into like, here's a 1v1, there's a 2v2, there's a 3v3 over here, and it's all these little small fights instead of just a front to back 5v5 where I think they would have gotten absolutely blasted. Before we move on to uh, the rest and uh, wrap up the show, uh, one last shout out to Maple, honestly, our Oppo players of the series today. There's so much to say about him. Legendary players. We said that he was celebrating his 11th uh, anniversary as an international debut. He's. We also know that he wants to make it count maybe more than ever this time, GB. No, absolutely. I mean, they PSG Talent uploaded a YouTube video with uh, Maple saying that this might be his last run and mm -hmm. this is potentially the, the last time that he's going to be playing on the international stage as well. So I think the fact that he's still this clutch uh, in game two on the Akali <laughs> where he just sick. completely gapped uh, Yone on the other side, but also this one where you're saying it as hell, right? Like his Akali multiple times just bailed PSG out. I mean, he, he was playing that so well in that previous clip. I was so impressed because not only does he hit the E on the Ash, but then he actually waits out the Lee Sin Q that he knows coming, then goes in on another angle, able to finish him off on the back line. He was creating so much 
space, putting so much pressure onto the pain gaming carries. He was laning really well in the isolated 1v1 against Jin Kato. Uh, I mean, he's, he is playing you know, like someone who is really at the top of their game still. And if he decides he doesn't want to retire, he can obviously keep going. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because we often talk about when has a player peaked, right? Like through all your years of playing, when was it the really the peak came down? And, and, and the thing is like, as you said yourself, Law, you keep competing with yourself as well. You mm -hmm. need to be better than your past year. Mm -hmm. And Mabel's just a guy who shows this hard uh, working ethic every single time, trying to be the best when he can. He's dominated the PCS for so long as well. So honestly, it just credit to Mabel because he's been fantastic. And I think we've seen more and more as, as League has developed as a, as a game that, you know, it's, it's kind of been disproven that you have to be super, super young. You have oh, to be yeah. like a 17 year old. And you know, if you're, if you're not amazing by the time you're 20, you're going to be all washed up and you're not going to be able to succeed. We're seeing more and more players, you know, really playing, uh, you know, at their their prime level later and later into their careers. Yeah. We have guys like Core JJ, who's playing some of the best league I've seen him play ever in the LCS. Yeah. He's 30, uh, Impact is 29. He just won MVP for the first time in, in the LCS, you know, like 11, 12 yeah. years into his career. Faker um, winning Worlds 10 exactly. years after winning Worlds last year. It's crazy. Honestly. Like that's, that stuff to me is so impressive. And it, and it really does show that there's always more that the players can improve on. Yeah. It's way more about mindset. It's way more about dedication and hard work than it is about your age. I love it. You know what, I'm just going to leave it on that note because for me it's it's a lot of hope for players who want to stay around in the scene for, for a the long boomers. time. Yeah, for yeah. the boomers <laughs> like us. Maybe even in the scene, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, focusing a bit, before we focus on tomorrow, what are the main takeaways from today? From a game perspective, meta perspective maybe? Uh, expectations. Don't pick Tristana, Rumble, and MF. Yeah, the Rumble definitely yeah. bait. I think uh, read the patch notes before you, you play the game. I'm glad that PSG got it in between the game break of game one and two to quickly readjust. But I also think in general from PSG, I want to see more for them. I want them to see them have a better read because this was this was not um, the PSG mm -hmm. that I thought we were going to see on the international stage. I've been seeing so much more domestically for, from them. And I'm really hoping that they can give MDK a fair fight because with the level of players all today, I was like, well, maybe it's not too bad for MDK because initially I did expect them to lose to PSG, now I think they can put up a fight. But you just never know which PSG is going to show up, even at MSI where they look so good. They went five games against uh, against BLG and then got 3-0'd by G2, right? Yeah. So it's like, this is a team that could have a, a rougher showing today and then come in when they play against MAD and look incredible. So you really don't know. Um, I would say, you know, my main takeaway, at least from what we've seen, is the AD carries mid look very, very weak. You know, that was kind of expected. Um, but I don't think that there's like one solidified meta. The second series was much more about these melee champions in mid, we saw Jinkato have a really good Yone game in game number one. We saw two Akali games that were dominant. Mm -hmm. In the other series, it was much more about like Orianna and Syndra yeah. and more that mage style. So I think we're seeing that there is flexibility. It's just kind of in a different way than what we saw before. And we need more info, maybe, before uh, forming an opinion here. 100 Thieves are going to make their debut tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, at 20, 20, yeah. Uh, <laughs> How confident are we on this well, one? That, that didn't sound R7 confident at all. I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> for, the, for this team. And I, and I have heard they're doing pretty well in scrims and oh, everything. Um, that's and usually a bad thing around these parts. Well, fa famously in an LCS, they normally do horrible in scrims. They like right. are normally getting blown up by everyone, uh, but then they usually do well on stage. So. I know that there, <laughs> there's a lot of young players on this team. Four of them have never played at Worlds, you know, so you never know how that's going to really show up. I yeah. think as long as they can play comfortable, they play to their own skill level, uh, that they're going to do really well in play-ins. And I, I am excited for, for a lot of these guys, especially, I mean, Sniper is just such a fun player to watch. He's, he's super young. He's, he's just loving being a pro and loving the experience of that so getting to see him make his debut at Worlds would be really cool when you know he's talked about the fact that Viper who is his brother if you didn't know also played in the LCS you know he never made it to Worlds it was his dream so he's kind of like living his brother's dream and been able to get that to happen in his rookie year which is really really cool that's fantastic. so you know that's an amazing story and, and River and Quid I think are, are going to show out yeah I mean so, I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to see River as well I've been hearing good things about his champion pool around the current meta River has got like Jarvan. yeah so I, I'm really curious if because... Jarvan is meta it's over for yeah <laughs> but it, honestly it's also just you know, River before he made it to the LCS also made it to the international stage still, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's such a cool matchup because you get to see Audi, who's been here so many times through R7 as well, but like the Peruvian goat, as they call him, also yeah. going up against River. And while 100 Thieves obviously are heavy favorites coming into tomorrow, it's still a very cool jungle matchup uh, between these two legendary players. We jinx that uh, enough, I feel like, today. So yeah, let, let, let's see what happens tomorrow. I mean, That's a, a he's just the one.
PS2 still won. Still. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens for the rest of our teams tomorrow. That's all for us here. GB, amazing as always to oh, be uh, to share a moment with you here at the desk. And Ezel, amazing to have you back. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We missed you. Thank we you. Missed it's you good to be lot. back. And we missed you all here as well. That's all for us here on the first day of Wolves 2024 planes. We'll be right back tomorrow. Same time, same place. Until then, take care, guys. Connie gonna move forward, gonna find the edge, he'll pull it right over the wall, oh, and there, super! Hand delivered, the nightmare of every single 80 carry. Oh, and the jungle is gone, Caddy's got nowhere to go! Might still have enough space to walk away, why is he sticking around? He's like, maybe they'll have a shot in the next one. Oh, that's Supa, the catch me, flash over, last. looking to finish it, flame chopper, shut down, clutch! Get the mediator now. Yeah, I get the bottle, get the bottle. Okay. You guys can kill him. Get 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 him. Get